Hi, it's me, Asmin Singh. Welcome back to the channel. And this time we're going to learn about the plant anatomies part 5, which is the final part. And the topic is secondary growth of the dicot stem. And this question is one of the most important questions. It has been asked almost 7 times in the past 19 years. Basically, we need to understand the meaning of the secondary growth first of all. Secondary growth, it is defined as the increase in the diameter of the axis. Or we can directly call it the diameter or the thickness or the girth of the stem. It means if this is the stem, then secondary growth means the increase in its diameter. It means increase in its thickness. And not only this much, it is the increase in the thickness due to the lateral meristems. It means due to the vascular cambium and the cork cambium. So basically secondary growth, it is the increase in the diameter of the axis or the thickness of the stem to the activities of vascular cambium and the cork cambium. Now, on the basis of the activities, we can describe the secondary growth in two ways. First of all, due to the activity of vascular cambium and second, the activity of cork cambium. Now, about the vascular cambium, we know about the cork cambium as we're telling at the end of the video. First of all, we need to write about the vascular cambium. So, first heading will be activity of vascular cambium so here we'll be telling how the vascular cambium it helps to increase the diameter of the stem so we know what is a vascular cambium simply it is the cambium which is present between the xylem and the phloem in the vascular bundles so it is known as vascular cambium or simply you can call it cambium activity of cambium but here we're dealing it in precise so activity of vascular cambium because it is in the vascular bundles present between the xylem and the phloem. So how does it help in increasing the girth of the stem or the thickness of the stem? So we can deal it under four to five subheadings. First of all, we have the formation of cambium ring. So what is meant by formation of the cambium ring? What I means is that in the vascular bundles, of a dicot stem. The cambium is present between xylem and phloem and it is known as intrafascicular cambium. It means simply the cambium which is present between xylem and phloem. It is known as intrafascicular cambium. Now during this secondary growth, this cambium along with the medullary rays, they become active. Now it means that if we are drawing the transverse section, it means TS of the dicot stem, we'll find this is the epidermis and this is the hypodermis and then we'll find the cortex and then endodermis, pericycle and then we'll find the xylem and phloem here, the vascular bundles. They are conjoint, collateral and open. It means cambium is present in dicot stem. So this is our cambium and this is the medullary ray. So in this secondary growth what happens is that this cambium along with this medullary ray they both become active so these medullary ray they become active and they are known as interfascicular cambium okay. the xylem and from the normal cambium it is the intrafascicular cambium but this medullary ray which also becomes active they are known as interfascicular cambium now this whole if we see it here medullary rays their here cambium is there so as a whole it acts as a ring an active ring of cells so this ring it is known as the cambium ring in this way the formation of cambium ring takes place so the intrafascicular cambium and the intrafascicular cambium they unite together to form a complete ring known as cambium ring so the activity of this cambium ring it gives rise to the secondary tissues now what is secondary tissue will be dealing in the another subheading so in our another subheading will be formation of the secondary tissues now this cambium ring, it becomes active as a whole as I said and now what happens is that in each cell of the cambium ring, mitotic division takes place. It means, I'll simply draw the cambium ring. If this is the cambium ring, her intrafascicular and her interfascicular cambium all together, if this is the cambium ring, it consists of cells, okay, some parenchymatous cells or the cells of the cambium so these cells, these cells, they start mitotic division in themselves. It means each cell, I am taking one cell. So this is 
one cell of the cambium ring it starts mitotic division now mitotic division takes place and two cells are formed so in this way this the cells they start mitotic division on, on both the sides it means on the interior side and on the exterior side as well now what happens is that these cells which form on the exterior side they form the phloem and those cells which form on the interior side they form the xylem so this is a simple cambium cell now it starts mitotic division on both the sides on further division the cells which are formed on interior side they form xylem and the cells which are formed on the exterior side they form the phloem now these xylem and phloem are not normal xylem and phloem these are formed as an activity of the cambium ring so they are known as secondary xylem and secondary phloem altogether this tissue these all the tissues together are known as secondary tissues so in this way the cambium ring it gives rise to the secondary tissues so the constitution of both xylem and phloem are similar xylem consists of the tracheids vessels xylem fibers xylem parenchyma phloem consists of the sieve tubes companion cells phloem fibers phloem parenchyma now one thing happens is that the activity of the cambium ring it is more on the inner side than on the outer side so the number of xylem produced is more than the number of phloem produced now due to this all the xylem they get pushed towards the central portion so the xylem soon occupies the central portion which is the pith and so whenever we cut a tree we find the xylem in the central portion which is the secondary xylem the phloem which is present here initially it gets crushed so let's not get confused see first of all phloem was present here xylem and phloem both are pre uh, present here so xylem is present here and phloem is present here if we see precisely these are the cambium these are the medullary rays between them as a whole they are acting as a cambium ring now from the cambium ring secondary xylem and secondary phloem are produced now the activity of the cambium ring is more on the inner side so the number of xylem produced is more so xylem is being produced these all the xylems they occupy the central portion and the phloem which is present initially it gets crushed so in the central portion only the secondary xylem remains so the bulk of a tr trunk of a tree it only consists of the secondary xylem that is all about the formation of the secondary tissues now we have another topic which is the secondary formation of the secondary medullary rays so the third one is the formation of secondary medullary rays what happens is that during the formation of the secondary xylem and phloem some cells of the cambium they produce parenchymatous cells two to three layers thick parenchymatous cells See, if this is the if this is the cambium ring so it is producing secondary xylem and secondary phloem so secondary xylem and secondary phloem are being produced but some of the cells of this cambium ring they produce the parenchyma cells this is the other parenchyma cells which are two to three layers thick in this way two to three layers thick in between the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem now these two to three layers thick parenchyma they are known as the secondary medullary rays they just separate the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem there is nothing complex in this while writing we can just write certain cells of the cambium instead of producing secondary phloem and xylem they produce two to three layers thick parenchymatous cells now these parenchyma cells are the medullary rays normally if we, if you see in the normal medullary ray parenchyma cells are there so these parenchyma cells are also known as medullary ray but secondary medullary ray because they are produced from the cambium ring now while writing this is all about the activity of the vascular cambium but yeah there is one topic annual ring now it's your choice you can write about the annual rings you cannot write about the annual rings it's not necessary to write about it because it does not play any role it means it does not play any important role you might get confused about the annual rings so it's your choice you can write or not still i'm gonna tell you about the annual rings so it's your option the fourth topic is the annual rings now basically the activity of this cambium ring it is affected by the variations in temperature it means in hot temperature it produces um, in different quantity in cold temperature it produces the secondary tissues in different quantity what happens is that in summer it means in spring season we can say not in exactly summer in spring season 
the cambium ring it becomes more active and it produces larger numbers of xylem and phloem which are known as the spring wood or we can call it early wood now in winter season or we can call it in autumn in autumn it becomes less active and produces less number of xylem so they are known as autumn wood or we can call it late wood now these spring wood and late wood they appear together as a ring it means the late suppose this is the cambium ring and xylem is produced these are the spring wood xylem which are produced in spring and these are the autumn wood or late wood which are pr uh, produced in the autumn season so together they appear in a ring and and the this whole ring is known as annual ring it means these two kinds of wood which are the spring wood and autumn wood they appear together in a concentric ring which is known as the annual ring we can also call it the growth ring now the interesting fact about this it is that this ring it is produced in one ear it means one ring is produced in one ear so for another ring to be produced it takes another one ear and for the third ring to be produced it takes another one ear in this way year by year annual rings get produced so each annual ring it is representing one year of the growth thus the age of the plant it can be approximately determined by counting the number of annual rings there is even a science of uh, determining the age of the plant by anatomy it means this anatomy by counting the number of annual rings it is known as dendrochronology dendro chronology now it is not of our concern still i told you about this annual rings it's your choice you can write or you cannot write about it now we are moving on for our next topic which is the activity of the cork cambium so we did about the activity of the vascular cam cambium now i'll tell you about the cork cambium now about the cork cambium it is an interesting thing to know what happens is that due to the increase in the diameter of the stem it means due to the production of the secondary tissues it has a pressure on the outer cells so the secondary tissues are being produced on the inner side as well as on the outer side due to the production of these secondary tissues it means due to the increased in, in the diameter of the stem it exerts an pressure on the outer side outer tissues now what is meant by outer tissues it means the cortex and the epidermis so if you draw the cambium ring this is the cambium ring the xylem is being produ produced here the phloem is being produced here now outside the cambium ring we have the pericycle we have the endodermis we have the cortex and then we have the hypodermis and then finally we have the epidermis so these tissues which are being produced here they exert a pressure on the cortex and the epidermis there so this exerted pressure of the um, secondary tissues it ruptures all the cortex and the epidermis it means epidermis and the cortex it gets ruptured due to the increased pressure of the secondary tissues now since it gets ruptured the cork cambium is produced now what is meant by cork cambium first of all see what happens is that precisely epidermis and cortex gets ruptured now due to this rupture the cells of the cortex which are lying close to the epidermis they become meristematic in origin and now what it means by being meristematic in origin it means it starts to divide i am telling you from the beginning what happens is that the secondary tissues they exert pressure on the outer tissues which are the epidermis and the cortex now due to this exerted pressure the cortex and the epidermis cells they get ruptured now since it gets ruptured there must be other cells to replace them for that the cortex cells which are lying close to the epidermis suppose this is the epidermis and the cortex begins from here okay then cells which are lying close to the epidermis these cortex cells they become meristematic in origin it means becoming meristematic means it begins to divide because meristematic tissues are the active tissues which have the capability of dividing so these cells they start to divide now these meristematic tissues it means these corks uh, sorry cortex cells which became the meristematic tissues these are known as the cork cambium cork cambium is also known as the phylogen 
okay now these tissues are the cork cambium so cork cambium it originated from the cortex cells which are lying close to the epidermis in some rare cases it it has also been or originating from the epidermis or the deeper layer of cortex it means if this is the epidermis then the deeper layer of cortex it mm, these cells become active and sometimes from cork cambium or sometimes even the epidermis they become active and form cork cambium but these are the rare cases mostly it is formed by the co uh, cortex cells which are lying close to the epidermis so now after the core cambium is formed what is the function of the core cambium basically core cambium as are the bunch of cells so now what happens is that this core cambium they further start to divide on both the sides internal and external as was done by the cambium ring in the vascular cambium so these core cambium after they are formed they also start to divide both on internal and external side on the external side suppose this is the core cambium okay this is the layer of the cork cambium see this is the epidermis and this is the layer of the cork cambium so what happens is that they start to divide on both the outer and inner side on the outer side they start to divide and form the cork and on the inner side they produce the secondary cortex cork is also known as periderm and this secondary cortex is known also known as philoderm now i'll explain about this see this Yes, core cambium it started to divide and after dividing on the outer side it is forming a cork now what is cork i'll be telling about it first of all secondary cortex now we know that the cortex has been ruptured due to the pressure exerted by the secondary tissues so these core cambium they produce another cells other parenchyma cells now these parenchyma cells form the cortex the new cortex no, old cortex was ruptured so now new cortex is formed from this it is necessary to be formed so it is also known as philoderm it is simple now what about the cork above this there is epidermis isn't it and here the cork is formed this is the cork cambium here it is epidermis and here the cork is formed now actually cork they are the bunch of dead cells it means they are the bunch of dead cells which are highly it, they have highly thick walls due to a substance called suberin okay due to the substance called suberin they are the dead cells they have very less almost no intercellular spaces between them they are very hard and they help in providing strength and rigidity so these cork are formed as a result of the cork cambium so this is meant by cork but you can get confused between a cork and a bark I'll tell you the difference between what cork and bark. What is a cork and what is a bark? About cork, I told you they are the dead cells. Suberin is there, which is formed by the activity of the cork cambium. But bark is a bit different. Actually, bark of a plant, it constitutes of all the dead tissues which are lying outside the active cork cambium. For example, if this is the active cork cambium, they are producing the cells on both the sides. So cork is produced here. Suppose these are the cork. And here the cortex is produced yeah the cork and outside the cork you know epidermis is lying so basically all the dead cells now the epidermis is dead we know because the pressure was exerted by the secondary tissue so epidermis is also dead so all the dead cells which are lying outside this cork cambium the they form the bark all the dead cells and cork is basically just the cells which are formed from the cork cambium now sometimes bark may also consist some cells of the cortex it depends on the position of the cork cambium if the cork cambium is formed in this region in the deeper layer of cortex as i said in rare cases it is formed in deeper layer of cortex then the some cells of the cortex which are dead they are they also constitute the bark but in usual cases only this cork and the epidermis they constitute the bark so that was just a difference so that you do not get confused while writing we just have to write about uh, the formation of the cork and the secondary cortex how it is formed so basically what happened see the cork cambium it is produced by the rupture of the uh, cortex and the epidermis due to the pressure of the internal tissues of the secondary tissues so some cells of the cortex which was lying close to the epidermis they became active they started dividing which is known as the cork cambium now it divides in particular way on the outer side on in the inner side on the outer side dividing it from the cork or periderm on the inner side it produces secondary cortex or philoderm it means parenchymatous cells 
so in this with the formation of the cork and the formation of the cortex they are adding more width to the stem and in this with this activity of cork cambium is helping in the secondary growth now sometimes it may also be asked in three marks describe the formation of the periderm so do not get confused periderm means cork now remember the name it is not very tough phylogen means cork cambium Phylogen produces periderm and philoderm. Derm means the cells which are produced from this cork cambium. Okay, so periderm means cork and philoderm means secondary cortex. And phylogen means cork cambium. Remember the name, it can be asked in three marks. And yeah, one more question which may be asked in one marks was. Uh, this dendrochronology what is meant by dendrochronology so we do not need to write about annual rings while writing about the secondary growth still we should remember the name the dendrochronology it is the branch of anatomy which deals with the calculation of the age age of the plant by the help of the annual rings now i'll tell you from the beginning what has happened once again so you don't get confused first of all we have two ways of secondary growth activity of vascular cambium activity of cork cambium so activity of vascular cambium can be defined into three or four subheadings formation of cambium ring the xylem and the phloem has cambium which are the intrafascicular cambium the medullary rays they act act as cambium it means they also act as dividing cells they also become active which is known as interfascicular cambium they both together are known as cambium ring so these cambium ring they give rise to the secondary tissues by dividing suppose one cambium cell it starts dividing mitotically so on the outer side it gives phloem on the inner side it gives xylem Xy the division of uh, cambium cells on the inner side is more so more amount of xylem is produced and finally the central portion is occupied by the xylem some of the cambium cells they do not produce secondary and xylem and phloem they just produce some parenchyma cells which are two to three layers thick which are the secondary medullary rays they separate the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem now annual rings this cambium the formation of the secondary tissues from the cambium ring it is affected by the temperature in summer it produces more in winter it produces less so spring wood autumn wood basically in one year it produces one annual ring so it is um, it, the age can be determined by ca counting the annual rings in the plant then we have the activity of the cork cambium in the cork cambium it is simple the tissues which are the secondary tissues which are formed as xylem and phloem on the inner side they exert pressure on the outer side so the outer cortex and the epidermis they get ruptured and since they get ruptured now new cells is to be produced for that the some cells of the cortex near the epidermis they get uh, active they start dividing they become meristematic now these are known as cork cambium they divide in particular way on the outer side they form the cork or the periderm it means dead cells on the inner side they form the active parenchyma cells which sometimes may contain chloroplast now they are the secondary cortex or the philoderm in this way the cells are actively added to the plant on um, the stem and in this way the, uh, the girth or the diameter of the stem they increase and this is about the secondary growth now you must be wondering why the secondary growth we are dealing about the dicot stem and not about the monocot stem so guys monocot stem do not contain vascular cambium it means in monocot if you remember the vascular bundle was closed collateral Closed collateral means they do not have cambium. Xylem and phloem are together. It means in a bundle, but there is no cambium. So since there is no vascular cambium, the secondary growth is completely absent in monocot. Yeah, in some type of monocotyledons like like dracaena, yucca, and palms and lilies, different type of secondary growth occurs which. Uh, occurs without the involvement of the vascular cambium but that is not our concern we just need to remember that in monocot secondary cambium sorry secondary growth is not there because the vascular cambium is absent and about the dicot i told you if you have any queries you can mention in the comment section for now this was the end of the plant anatomy wait till the next video till then take care thank you goodbye